morning, everyone. It's Jared here again from the Alpha Capital Group, um, doing a run through for what's been a very, very um, choppy week, both back and forth in, in a range of different asset classes, um, but also a preview for the NFP um, later this afternoon as well. So a half one today, we do have the NFP. So for those who are new or those who are unaware, the NFP is the monthly payrolls figure for the US. So it, it looks at all the job numbers created within the last calendar month. Um, against previous assumptions uh, or previous data um, and also against current forecasts. Um, now, I, I suppose the one caveat that I would say is with the NFP data, we have seen in the wake or, or, or following the COVID pandemic, we have seen quite a few revisions in price action in, in, the, in, the, in the numbers, the jobs numbers in, in, in kind of later months. Um, so this is, this is just an initial kind of public, um, I suppose, information in terms of the actual price action. Uh, or, the, or the, the job numbers, should I say. Um, so before we start, very, very quick one with the Alpha Capital Group at the moment, we are currently doing a three a 30% reduction in the challenges, that of which we are currently doing. So you can see here very, very quickly, um, there is a significant reduction on the different challenges, albeit whether it's 50K, 100K or 200K, okay? Um, of course, um, any questions or anything like that, please do feel free to contact us. Um, and beyond that, now we can finally get started for today's preview. So this morning in the economic data, we did have the European retail sales. Now, if we look at the broader markets over the last week, we've seen the Euro, both the, the European indices, like the Euro stocks and the DAX, but also in the FX markets, the euro has been significantly hit. And that is, of course, off the back of this whole Russia-Ukraine fundamental narrative that's currently playing out in the markets. Now, with soaring energy prices in Europe, we're seeing Brent, we're seeing WTI go. Um, I think it's it's the fourth consecutive month where we've had a 10 plus percent gain. I think at the moment this week, we're on 10% alone. Um, and I think on this month, for, for the month of February into March, we've had a 25% gain in energy prices. Those that, that that kind of risk off narrative in the markets has seen obviously gold extend higher, which is something we'll be looking at shortly uh, again. And it reiterates the fact that not alone was the ruble hit um, last weekend on the open this week, but also the euro has seen massive declines as well. Like if you look at the euro against any of its major G7 counterparts, for example, the dollar, it's, it's now trading at 110. Uh, the euro Aussie is, is down kind of 12, 1500 points. The euro Kiwi is down. 1,000 to 1,200 points in the last calendar month. So as a direct consequence of these narratives, we can see this starting to play consistently into the euro. And as long as this continues, well, there's no real reason to be technically buying the euro because it's constantly now being depreciated against these other G7 counterparts at the moment in the wake of what's happening between Russia and Ukraine. Now, as we know today, as we said, at the beginning today is NFP in America. So let's have a very, very quick preview for the NFP. Now, the job numbers um, last month was 467. It did outperform. This month, they're looking for a figure of approximately 400K. So if the job numbers this month perform well, let me see kind of five, 600K, that is going to be seen as another upside provision, which generally will be good for the stock markets. It generally will be good for the indices. So I suppose from our perspective is, let's see how does the job numbers come out today? Significantly that, I will also be paying close employment on the um, average early earnings. So that's basically the wage inflation. So we're keeping an eye on that. Last month, last month we went 0.7%, which was a massive increase as well. And this month, they're looking for a further increase of 0.5%. So again, paying close attention to that. Now, with the rising inflation figures, that should in theory mean that the average early earnings uh, percentages figures should remain fairly high. So let's keep an eye on that to see if there's any kind of clues in, in terms of the inflation outlook. Um, the final piece of data we're looking at today is, of course, the labour participation rate. And at the moment, that's kind of stable around kind of 62, anywhere between kind of 61 and a half and kind of 62, 62 and a half percent over the last number of months. This current figure is looking for a participation rate of around 62 percent. So anything above kind of 62 now, last month we had 62.2, so it's slightly lower than last month. So, of course, if this comes in with a, an increase of, let's say, two or 300,000 on the payrolls, or, or let's say, for example, even we're coming in at five or 600,000 on the payrolls, we could very easily see six, uh, we could see 62.5 or 62.3, which would obviously be an upside revision for the estimates. So, of course, keeping an eye on that, 
And last thing, of course, is the unemployment rate. So anything kind of sub 3.9% or coming in at 3.9% should remain fairly calm. Anything above kind of 4, 4.1% is obviously uh, higher than last month, which means the employment is actually going slightly the other way, even if we are taking on 500 new jobs, okay? So that's a quick look at the, uh, the economic calendar. Of course, on Monday, we will be doing another preview for the week ahead, particularly factoring in the price action that may or may not occur over the weekend. Now, when we look at Russia, Ukraine, some of the fundamental narratives yesterday said that there was a temporary ceasefire to allow evacuations for um, civilians and the injured. So, of course, watching that narrative very, very closely over the weekend to see how does it go. Now, Russia's goal at the moment is for complete and utter demilitarization of Ukraine, which means basically means laying down of their arms, which basically um, mean that Russia would um, have Ukraine very, very similar to that of Belarus, which would mean it would become another very much puppet state of Russia. So, of course, keeping a very, very close eye on the fundamental narratives over the weekend to see if there is a repeat of last week where we see massive uh, gaps in the markets. Last Sunday night, Dow Jones gapped 500 points lower. Euro dollar gapped 120 points lower. Gold gapped $30 higher. So it's important to be able to reconcile that the volatility is there in the markets, and if you are taking positions over the weekend, you're doing so at your own peril because your stop losses won't be met at your exit point. It will be met at the next available quoted price. So it's important to factor that into consideration. Now, when we move into the markets now, we can see that gold uh, during the week had broken through back above that 1920 level that we mentioned last week uh, on, on the open. Since then, we had a pullback to 1920, but the price action has been grinding steadily higher again this week. And we now look set for another run into this 1960, 1970 previous highs that was quoted from the 24th of February. Now, at the moment, we had a temporary range this week. We can actually see that very, very clearly as well on the one hour. But the price action at the moment is trying to grind higher. So normally speaking with the NFP, gold is one of the more heavily volatile asset classes which are affected. So if the figures are good today and the job numbers outperform, that could add further a strength to the gold and we could see gold finally making that move into 1955 1960 so let's keep an eye at the job numbers today for the nfp now second to that then we will also be looking at the dxy now the dxy for those of you who are unaware is the dollar currency index and is basically used as a metric to calculate the strength or weakness of the dollar now first and foremost we can see here very very quickly what are we looking at well, the dollar has continued to outperform this week. We see GB, GBP USD marginally down. We see euro dollar getting extremely hit this week. We've now broken through 111. And as we speak this morning, we're sitting just around 110. So previous projections that I've kind of been looking at over the last kind of four to six weeks was a run in for the euro dollar to hit this 107.50 one weight handle. And at the moment, we are currently on our way there. All right. Now, when we look at the price action, more broadly speaking, we can see that the dollar is still continuing to pick up strength despite the strength in the gold price. So you can see that gold is obviously up, but the dollar is obviously up as well because the dollar is used as a safe haven. Now, for those of you who don't know what a safe haven is, a safe haven means that when there's risk or uncertainty in the markets, there's certain asset classes that investors will hedge their investments into to protect against downside risks. One is obviously being gold. Two at the moment is obviously being commodities regarding the war narrative and three then is is your safe haven currency which generally form the dollar the swiss franc and to a lesser degree the japanese yen now at the moment there is also um interest in in particularly the, the longer run treasuries because treasuries uh, tie is correlated very very closely with the fx markets all right so keeping a very very close eye on that as well now when we look at the indices very very quickly overall the overall since the beginning of the week the indices have done quite well considering where it was um, kind of Sunday night into, into, into obviously um, Monday's open. Now, when we look at the markets more broadly speaking, the S&P or the Dow Jones, should I say first and foremost, is very much consolidated between this 34,000 level here, um, which we did reject again yesterday before bro breaking lower overnight, and this 30, 33,200 level at the low. So this is kind of our range at the moment for the week. Now, it's an 800 point range, roughly speaking, which still shows that there's a lot of volatility even on an intraday level between these shorter time frame analysis. Now, at the moment, we're sitting just, to, just underneath this uh, 33, 450, 500 level. So watching the NFP today to see, is there um, a move higher for these indices? Now, of course, if the indices outperform today, that should generally mean that the indices might get a little bit of a bump. Now, no, now normally speaking, it's less 
affected than compared to that of gold. So I would still be, if you're looking at trading an asset class for the NFP, you would definitely still look at gold over the indices as it tends to be a more meaningful move. But of course, at the same time, it's important to look at all these asset classes in their own right. Now, as we said, 33,500 is where the S&P or the Dow Jones, should I say, is currently holding. If we look at the S&Ps, again, similarly to drawing out this narrative of this longer term trend since the beginning of the year, the price action is ledging lower. But over the last week, we've seen the price action continue to hold between this 4,300 level and 4,400 level on the S&P. Now, current technicals that I have here is that we have rejected this lower, low, lower high scenario. And the price action is holding underneath this 618 4408 position that I kind of have plotted myself. So I suppose into the NFP today, I will be watching to see does the SPs break through this 4280, 4300 liquidity level that we've seen since since the beginning of this week. If so, that could mean that the indices could potentially descend lower into the close tonight for what could be another very, very bearish weekly close. Now, as we said this morning, the European indices did get hit quite drastically and have been hit consistently over the last number of days, and uh, particularly as I said, the DAX. Um, and the euro stocks in particular. Now, last but not least on our list is that of the Nasdaq. So as we look at the Nasdaq, Nasdaq is slightly different uh, in the sense that yes, the, the, the bearish trend that's currently to play currently playing out is still there. And um, we did reject 14,400 yesterday before we turned lower. And now overnight uh, into the weekly close and into the NFP this afternoon, the price action is holding under this 13,950, 14,000 liquidity level that I've looked at. So we did break out last night and we are consistently holding it lower. So if that plays out and we see bearishness coming in, well, NASDAQ will be the one that will be hit the most. Now, the reason why the NASDAQ will be hit the most, because in the NASDAQ index, we have all our tech stocks. And as we know, the tech and the gold stocks get hit far more systemically and far more seriously um, than that of the value stocks, which are located in the Dow Jones and in the broader S&P index as a whole. So if you are looking at, at one getting hit a little bit more than the others, it would it would, it would be that of the NASDAQ, particularly when you compare um, targets or declines over the beginning of the year. You can see that the NASDAQ is trading significantly lower in percentage terms than what the S&P and the Dow Jones is currently doing. I think at the, at the minute, the S&P and the Dow Jones is trading kind of somewhere between 12 and 15%, whereas NASDAQ is in that bear market territory where we've obviously looked at as well. All right. So very, very quick re recap today um, of the of the week ahead or, or the week that's just passed, should I say, um, the NFP this afternoon. And of course, keeping our eyes on the close tonight to see, uh, one, how do we close? Are we bearish? Um, or does the markets hold up quite well after the NFP? Uh, and second to that, um, also, of, also, of course, watching the price action and the narratives over the weekend for updates regarding the Russia-Ukraine war and invasion. So, um, risk management becomes ever so important in times like this. So it is important to keep that into consideration. Um, but until then, uh, until Monday, have a great weekend.